Hey kids, here is your lesson on Objective 17. Uh, this will be the highlights of our lesson. Won't be perfect, won't be every little thing that a math teacher could put in, but hopefully this is enough to get you going from home. So we are going to apply properties of integer exponents uh, to write equivalent expressions. So basically we're going to write big numbers using uh, exponents. In order to do this, we do need to do some review of old materials. So basically the front page of this is going to be old and the back page is going to be new. Remember that a prime number has two factors, and those are 1 and itself. So for example, 5 is a prime number because the only numbers that go into 5 evenly are 1 and 5. For example, a person might say that 2 goes into 5, but 2 goes into 5 two and a half times. 2 and a half is not a whole number, so a factor needs to be a whole number. 2 is a prime number. It's, in fact, the only even prime number. Uh, its factors are 1 and 2, and there aren't any other numbers that go into it evenly. 7 is another example of a prime number. The only two numbers that go into 7 evenly are 1 and 7. In the previous section, uh, the previous unit, it was really helpful for students to memorize their perfect squares, made work a little bit easier for them. Uh, similarly, in this unit, memorizing the first handful of prime numbers could be helpful too. Uh, we said at the top that prime numbers examples are 5 and 2 and 7, and we're going to build from there. So 2 is prime, and that means that all of the numbers that 2 goes into are not prime. Those are composite because, for example, because 4 is a multiple of 2, that means numbers that go into 4 are 1 and 4 and 2. That's three factors, so that breaks the definition of only two factors, one in itself. So 4 is not a prime number. 6 is not a prime. None of the, none of the even numbers are prime after 2 because they all have factors of 1 themselves, 2, and at least something else. 3 is prime because the only factors of 3 are 1 and 3. Uh, that means, similar to 2, all of the uh, multiples of 3 are not prime because, for example, 6 would have not just 1, 6, and 2, but 3 as well. So 6 is still not prime. 9 is not prime. 3 times 3 is 9, so that means factors of 9 would be 1, 9, and 3. 12, 15, 18, 21, if 21 were there. The rest of these are also prime uh, to show you that some of our larger numbers can still be prime. Bigger numbers can still be prime. Numbers in the hundreds can still be prime. It's just less likely as you move up that numbers are going to be prime. So let's list our first several of them, and if you could commit these to memory, that would help you quite a lot, or at least have them on hand. Now, the opposite of a prime number is a composite number. These are numbers that have more than two factors, or three and more. So for example, 10 has multiple factors, 1 and 10, 2 and 5, so it has four factors, so therefore it is composite. 20 has a lot of factors, 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. 20 has six factors. It doesn't make it more composite than this one. It's just either prime or composite. It is or it's not. 1,000 has like a ton of factors, 2 and 500, 4 and 250, 5 and 200, and so on. You could go on and on with that one. So composite numbers have three or more factors. Sometimes the and or more can be a lot, a lot of factors. Now we have a couple rule breakers. 1 and 0 are neither prime nor composite. And let's explain why. So the number 1 has the factor 1. And the definition of a prime number is that it has factors 1 in itself. Well, 1 times 1 is 1, but itself is 1. So you could say it has two factors technically, 1, 2, but they are the same. So some people would argue that they have to be two different factors. The other rule breaker is 0. Factors of 0 are 1 in itself, and it's true. 1 times 0 is... And so in addition, sorry, they said that 0 times 1 is 0, so 1 in itself. And so, um, however, you need to consider that 
2 times 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, you could say that 0 has an endless number of factors. So because of these reasons, 0 and 1 are neither prime nor composite because they're kind of they're kind of weirdos. Okay. All right, so we are going to launch into writing these exponents in um, equivalent expressions. And in order to do this, the best way to go about it is to go back to factor trees, if you recall those. Uh, so, and you can do them a variety of different ways, so you might find different factors than I do, and that's fine. Uh, 2 times 8 is 16. Remember, it's these two make this. These two, right? 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 2 is 4. And these are all primes, so I'm going to stop here. So you can say 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. Well, remember, if I have the same base repeated with itself in multiplication, Oops, I can write that same base, keep the base, and it's repeated four times, so the exponent is four. Let's try another one. Factor this guy. I did three and 15. You might have done five and nine. And so I have three times three times five is 45. All of these are prime numbers. And to simplify this using exponents, you would say, 3 squared, because there's two of them, times 5. And that's your final result. Try this one. Go ahead of me. I chose this path. You might have done like 4 and 13 and gone from there. So this is the same as 2 times 2 times 13 is 52. Or you could say 2 squared times 13 52. Alright, so there's a couple of rules for writing numbers, uh, for prime factorization and writing your numbers uh, in an equivalent way using exponents. First of all, write the factors in ascending order. So that means little to big. So in this case, you wouldn't write 5 times 3 squared. You wouldn't write 13 times 2 squared. Also use the multiplication dot not the multiplication x, because later in life when you start doing different operations with these expressions, you may have a variable mixed in. Typically the variable is x. And when you have an x for multiplication sign, an x that is also a variable that gets confusing. Okay, on to the new. I wish I could ooh, zoom out just a little bit so we have negative exponents here. I'm going to try to keep this right where it is. So if you look at the bottom here, this is a, I'm going to tape my thing down so it doesn't move. Uh, this is a snapshot of what we did in our previous objective. Uh, 5 to the power of 0, uh, anything to the power of 0 is 1. And we kept the same base here. And as we increase our exponents, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we increase this number by a multiple of 5. 1 times 5 is 5, times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125, times 5 is 625. And you can do the reverse as well. 625 divided by 5 is 125 divided by 5 is 25 divided by, and so forth. And so we're going to continue this pattern, same base of 5, and here we have 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and we continue to go into the negatives. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so forth. So yes, there is such a thing as a negative exponent. So let's kind of play with some numbers here to uh, find maybe some patterns. If I continue this pattern of dividing by 5, 1 divided by 5 would be 1 fifth, right? That means 1 divided by 5. And if I divided by 5 again, I would have 1 25th. And if I divided by 5 again, I would have 1 125th. Divide by 5 again, 1 625th. Now if I look at all of this, you might see some commonalities here. See how I have 625 and 625, 125 and 125, 25, 25, 5 and 5 with a 1 in the middle? Yeah. And this one has a 4, and that one has a 4 as an exponent, but this one is a fraction, and that one's not. 5 cubed is 125. 5 cubed uh, to the negative third power is 1 over 
125. See how those go together? The squares are both 25. The to the first power is both 5. Also, you'll notice that all of the negative exponents tend to, oh, not tend to be, are fractions with a numerator of 1. These are not coincidence. Let's study some other things about this. I'm going to turn our fractions into factor trees, which is maybe going to be confusing, but I think it'll be okay. So if I have, oh, 1 over 5, 5 is already prime. So I could say that this is just 1 over 5 to the first, if I had to. It's kind of a weird thing to say. What if I do 1 over 25? Factors of 25 are 5 and 5, right? So I could say this is the same as 1 over 5 squared. Here I have 1, I'm going to go over here where there's more space. If I do factors of 125, 5 times 5 times 5, that's the same as 1 over 5 cubed. Well, look at here. 5 to the negative third power is the same as 1 over 5 cubed. 5 to the negative second power is the same as 1 over 5 squared. See how the exponents are the same, but the negative's different? 5 to the negative first power is the same as 1 over 5 to the first power. Again, not all these things are coincident at all. These are all related to one rule that you will learn. Any number to a negative exponent is that same number or expression in the denominator of a fraction under 1. And when you move this expression to the denominator, you lose the negative. So if we applied that, oh, it's clear at the tippy top of the page. If we apply that to this top one here, that would mean that I could do 5 to the 4th in the denominator under 1 and lose that negative. So these two are equivalent, and I don't even have to do all that stuff in the middle. Okay, that might have sounded a little unfamiliar and strange and different, and so what would be good for us is some practice. So I will talk you through this top row and then give you a second to do the next row on your own and come back and maybe talk you through it. So if we apply this rule, I'm going to zoom in. I feel like these exponents are itty bitty. Okay. So if we apply the rule that we had at the top, 7 to the negative 8th power is the same as 1 over 7 to the 8th power. They are equivalent. Only I'm writing them with a positive exponent. And the reason why we take it out, or the reason why we get rid of the negative exponent, is just, it's just not the... Uh, most mature or proper way to write that expression. Uh, kind of like having an unsimplified fraction. Let's skip over here. We can do this same process only with a variable instead of a base number. So m to the power of negative 99 is the same as 1 over m to the power of 99. Uh, 1 over m to the power of 99, I think that's what I said. Now you got to be careful when you have parentheses, keep the parentheses. When you have a negative on the base, keep the negative. It's only the exponent that becomes positive. And this is where it gets super tricky. So here, 5 is positive. Well, let me back up. This means 5 times z to the negative fourth, right? Nothing wrong with 5, so we're going to keep it. z to the negative fourth means the same thing as 1 over z to the fourth. And now I can just multiply across. Why don't I kind of change this up so I can show you another way to represent 5. This is 5 in the numerator. It would be the same as 5 over 1. 5 times 1 is 5. 1 times z to the 4th is z to the 4th. So this is the final answer. It kind of looks like a math problem, but it is the solution. Okay, why don't you try the next row, give it a pause, and then you can start it back up and see how you did. All right, let's see. So 10 to the negative 6 is the same as 1 over 10 to the positive 6. C to the negative 6 is the same as 1 over C to the... C to the negative 6, yeah, is the same as 1 over C to the 6th. Okay, let's see. Did you remember to keep the negative and the parentheses, but only change this negative 10 exponent to a positive 10 exponent? I hope you did. And so, I'm going to move down here where I have more room. 
This means the same as 3 times t to the negative first, which is the same as 1 times 1 over t to the first, which is the same as 3 over t to the first. In one little subtle thing, unless the instructions say to write all exponents, you can just drop that exponent of 1 and just say 3 over t. Great job if you got that one. That one's a super tough one. All right, let's go into our next section here. I'm going to switch colors so you can see a difference. So we did this in the last lesson, too, where we are subbing in different values for variables and then evaluating, or that means to solve or simplify as far as you can. Remember, if you're going to substitute in a negative value, please put that in parentheses. And also, I want to strongly encourage you to please resist using a calculator, if at all possible, because oftentimes uh, kids rely on it too much and sometimes get the wrong results and then don't know what they're doing either. So, three to, uh, sorry, x to the negative fourth power is the same as three to the negative fourth power here, because x is three. See this x and this x, they're the same. So three goes in there. And the next step would be to write this so that I have a positive exponent to work with. So that's the same as 1 over 3 to the 4th. That means 1 over 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times itself 4 times. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So all that to say, x to the power of negative 4 is 1 over 81, if x equals 3. Great. Let's try another one. X to the power of negative, sorry, Y to the power of negative 2. Remember those parentheses. Okay. And then, next step would be to rewrite this so that you have a positive exponent. And so if you punch into a calculator, negative 2 squared, you'll get negative 4, which is not right. You know that negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. A negative times a negative is a positive. Let's do one more, and then I'll set you out on your own. Here's y, again, negative 2, to the negative fifth power. That's the same as 1 over negative 2 to the positive fifth power. 1 over negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, times negative 2 is negative 8, times negative 2 is positive 16, times negative 2 is negative 32. There you go. All right, take a second, please, and try out that bottom row. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut off that last question. Hit play, and I will walk you through this. Okay, z to the negative fourth, because z is four, would be four to the negative fourth. Right with a positive exponent, so one over four to the fourth. Four to the fourth, uh, four times four is 16, times four is 64, times four is 256. Now, if you needed to use a calculator to get from here to here, you absolutely can. Or you could, you know, do it by hand. Wouldn't hurt anything. Get a refresher on that. Okay. Y to, uh, sorry, 5 to the y would be 5 to the negative 2, if y is negative 2. You can write that with a positive exponent. You can keep the parentheses if you want. Don't have to. 5 squared is 25. Hopefully these are rolling along pretty easily for you. Z to the Y, here's your Z. Y is negative two, put it in parentheses, equals one over four squared, or one over 16. Great, cut it off again, I'm so sorry. All right. This may see, com seem confusing. It's one of those things that I strongly recommend you just jump in and get lots of practice and hopefully get some feedback when you get your homework back to see how you're doing. So if you look at the homework, you will see that it is written to mirror the notes so that you have a reference to help you. So this top section is about prime numbers and composites. So remember we did on the front, Prime and composite numbers, right? Okay. It says to circle the primes, draw an X over the composites. So for example, uh, 11 is one of the prime numbers that you got in your notes. See, 11, right there. Composite, oh, 21. 
1 and 21, 3 and 7. Yep, those are all factors of 21. Be careful, there might be a neither. Remember this. Okay, that's a hint for you. Okay, for the next section, you are to write the prime factorization for each number. So go ahead and factor however you want. I'm going to do mine this way. So I have two threes. I'm writing them first because they're the smallest number. Multiplication dot times 11. So that's what I would like for you to do for that section. Here, write each expression using a positive exponent. So you have examples of this in your notes. That's what we did here. These don't fall in the exact same order. Sometimes they kind of skip around. So feel free to use your notes. So for example, b to the negative seventh is one over b to the seventh. And then finally, evaluate each expression with these new numbers. They're different numbers than your notes. So just like this. Remember to put this negative 3 in parentheses as you're working, okay? So for example, x to the negative third would be 4 to the negative third, or 1 over 4 cubed. Uh, let's see, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. There you go. All right, hopefully this was a helpful start for you. If you are still confused, please do not be bashful to shoot me an email. I'm happy to help. Here is my address. You are never a bother to me. Of course, you can always see me before school and in class as well. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you back in math class. Bye.